situation. So since you took over in 2017, did the government of Adam Abaro ever ask you for money? No. They never ask you? No. Okay, so there's also a word that uh, they want you to, to, to buy buses. Uh, there's the allegations out there that this could also be one of the reasons why you removed, that you were asked to buy 200 buses. And this is different from the ones at GTSC. Is this true? That's, that's, uh, that's, that's speculative. And, um, but also, I think it's important that uh, there are certain things which come to my knowledge because of my position. I think it will be unethical to discuss those things here. But one thing I can say, mm -hmm. one thing I is that uh, GTSC find the buses that they needed and they bought 25 buses. They gave a loan to, social, to GTSC. Social Security gave $119 million loan to GTSC to buy 25 buses for GTSC's operations. Okay. And yeah. So uh, the 200 buses, you're not going to comment on that? It's speculation. Um, I, it wouldn't make sense for me to talk on something that is speculated. Okay. So uh, is it also true that uh, uh, the, your, your office wanted to buy two vehicles and the Ministry of Finance said, we want you to buy this through TK Motors? Are you aware of anything like that? We had no plan to buy any vehicles. We bought vehicles in 2018, and we bought them to through to competitive bidding through G, uh, GB, using GBP rules, and they were purchased from TK Motors, I believe. Okay, so is there any any uh, do you have any differences? I mean, we're we going to get into more other issues uh, later on, but I just want to make sure that I bring these things up. And later on, if people have questions, they can also text it to me. But uh, there's also speculations. I just want us to clear these things. I know some of this could sound a little bit petty, but you know how uh, what's on social media and how everything is. Everybody's talking about these issues. There's what that you have. A, you do not have a good relationship with the Minister of Finance. And there are speculations that this could be one of the reasons why because you personally picked up your phone in your office and called him and said you need to come and pay your loan. I know loans are uh, things that are very confidential, but it's been out there that a lot of government officials have loans as well as security and housing finance corporation. So did you call him to say, come and settle your loan? First, let me, let me, let me go back first and talk about uh, the, the, the relationship. Um, I am... I am not aware that the finance minister has uh, disliked for me. Um, our relationship has always been cordial mm -hmm. and to one another, and the relationship has always been professional. Um, he was the line minister, and the line minister, uh, the line ministry has an oversight responsibility over social security. In all my interactions with him, <clears throat> I have not noticed any dislike. Now, on a personal front, you know, um, and in very different uh, circumstances, when he was the Gambian ambassador in the UAE, and I was then based in Dubai as the chief finance officer of Standard Chart, Africa's business, he frequented my house on weekends, and we had many meals together in my home. Uh, since then, we have had no reason to have any become enemies. Um, so really, I, there's no personal animosity as far as I know between me and him. Now, regarding his dealings with social security or lack thereof, uh, I think it will be irresponsible for me to be discussed because it's a confidential matter. Okay, so you won't be able to tell us if you called him or not. That's confidential. No, I mean, those are, those are things reason purely because of my position regarding an individual so whether it happened or not whether he has a whether he has any business to do with social security or not i think it will be improper to discuss that here. it will be unethical and unprofessional Okay, um, that's uh, understandable. And um, also your deployment to the foreign affairs, to the Senegal uh, Secretariat, a lot of people, there were, there were divided opinions about this because uh, many people said they have no, no, no issue to deny that you did very well in your position. 
But others also are saying it was a political appointment that when you came to Gambia from your retirement, you were already in Gambia. It was Amadou Sane, a UDP, um, that time he was the Minister of Finance, who handpicked you. And there were also speculations that you got that job because you are UDP. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I have, I have had those things many, many, many times before. Let me, let me say a couple of things. Um, I, even not me, I believe all the MDs of um, parastatals uh, have been headhunted. I would call it headhunted. It's not about handpicking. Headhunting is a very common thing, even in the West. Um, my, my job with Social Security when it started in Banjul, it was not through an advertisement or anything. I was headhunted. Mm. So headhunting is really not a state. But let's come back to this question about UDP. Um, I am not a registered member of the UDP. I am not. So let's clear that. Uh, do I have good relations with several party stalwarts and senior leaders, party leaders? Yes, I do. I do. And some of them are very distinguished. And I can clearly say they were also very instrumental in, the, in, the, in breaking down Jame and dictatorship. And I have nothing but admiration and respect for them, and in fact for everybody else who contributed in the downfall. But I am not a member of UDP. Now, as to whether I was hired because I am UP, again, it's speculation, but it cannot be true because, like I've said, I am not a UDP member. Now, I was appointed by the president. I think it's important to make that point clear. Mm -hmm. I was appointed. Now, clearly, there must have been recommendation. And it is likely that that recommendation came from the former Minister of Finance, who is a senior cadre of UDP. But I believe my performance over these last three years is a vindication that regardless of who recommended me, the president did appoint someone to head the social security who was able to achieve a significant return for the members. And I think at the end of the day, that is really what is important. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, um, so one would also wonder uh, a professional like yourself who does very, very well in all your uh, the uh, different institutions that you served, uh, but your relationship with your staff, how is that like? Because I remember when we first came to the security, the Fatu Network, I think we were one of the first media groups to have an interview with you. And what the staff was saying, Manjang wouldn't even say hello to anybody. He would not even shake your hand. He would just walk past you just like that. Do you think that kind of contributed to the relationship you had with your staff, especially the last one? Well, it, it could, but um, I, I actually greet people. <laughs> well, you don't uh, shake their hands. I, I actually shake hands. You cannot be that not be shaking hands. It's just not possible. That is what, who we are. We shake hands. If you ask even with uh, um, my former uh, employer, Standard Charter, when I was here in Standard Charter, I remember I once came to Banjul with um, uh, one of the guys who worked for me, who was responsible for, he was responsible for West Africa, but based in Ghana. And we had a visit together to Banjul. Mm -hmm. When we got to the office, the security guard then, Mr. Party, uh, came out to embrace me. And this guy is an Indian guy. He was with me and he was shocked because he was saying, I cannot believe that this is how casual you guys can be. You know, and now if you go to anybody now, um, sometimes, you know, uh, I am not perfect. I suddenly, uh, just like anybody, I wouldn't say I am perfect. I wouldn't say I have not done things that I could have done differently. Uh, um, because when you want to introduce culture in a system where certain behavior has been entrenched for quite a while, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. And, and so maybe I could have been much more sensitive to dealing with some of those things. But to say I do not greet or I do not shake hands. I mean, I know uh, 
talking about personal uh, stuff because some people uh, can be antisocial, but it's just that in the in our society, how it is in Gambia, because those are some volunteer with the one. Feel free to come in because soon you in the affair in Gambia. So each time it has to do with Kaban country, I always say uh, we should all be able to work together. We do not have to like each other, but when it has to do with the country, we should be able to work together. So for transparency, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh, I must also say that there is a Gambian who lives in the U.S., in America, and uh, he contacted me to say he wants to contribute towards this program that I'm just starting, that's fat to stake, and he pledged $500 every month, and he actually gave me uh, $500 today. So I said I want to be able